Hi folks, it's The General here with episode 11 of the 59th Minute Fantasy Premier League podcast. Recording on Tuesday the 21st of August, so Game Week 2 is over us and we're looking ahead now to Game Week 3. If you're a new listener, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at FPL General. Just going to change things up a little bit this week, structure-wise. So I'm going to start off this week, just going to give a shout-out to those four players, three players this week that played 59 minutes. Then I'm going to briefly review game week two, um, and then going to move into some talking points from the weekend and talk about a few players I've added to my watch list. Going to look at the game week three captaincy then and game week three transfers as well so i haven't made any transfers yet this week um, i made an early one last week but i haven't made any yet this week so i'll talk a little bit about what i'm thinking about doing this week for game week three and i'll finish off with uh, four or five questions from slack and twitter so first of all ross barkley mark albrighton and Anthony Martial, congratulations, played 59 minutes in game week two. So each of those guys got one FPL point. I want to give Charlie Austin a shout out as well. It wasn't quite 59 minutes, but Charlie only managed 57 minutes. So one point for him as well at the weekend. So as I said last week, I'm just going to start the show every week, giving those guys a shout out who managed to play the dreaded 59 minutes uh, for straight managers. I know most of those players aren't very popular so nobody's getting nobody got stung too badly this week moving into game week two review now so i got 74 points uh, to go with my 70 points in game week one so i'm sitting on 144 points now total which sees me ranked 575k now if you told me at the start of the season i was going to get 70 points and 74 points first two game weeks I would have thought I'd be sitting a lot higher than uh, 575k, but it's been two very high scoring game weeks. A lot of big hitters firing big time, and I've been hit hard by a couple of 50 50 decisions. But overall, 575k, I'm pretty happy with that uh, after two game weeks. It, it definitely could be a lot worse. Um, and I was just looking at my ranks today from last season. After game week two last season, I think it was 566k, so in a very similar position to build on. Um, hoping for another big season. It was a green arrow, slight green arrow. I think it went up just under 100,000 places with 74 points. So as I said, it was a high scoring game week, average was 60 points. I suppose I have to start with uh, the whole Sala Aguero captaincy uh, saga. So I went for, I captained Mo Salah. Um, a lot of people went for Aguero, so Aguero got 20 points, Salah got 9 points, so Aguero, those who went with Aguero were rewarded. Um, I I was on the FPL show last week, On th- we recorded it on Thursday night, and I said on the show that that my captaincy was currently on Aguero, but it was more than likely going to change back to Salah by the weekend. And then the, the infamous Guardian article came out on Friday, which suggested that maybe uh, Pep Guardiola was going to Uh, rest Sergio Aguero for the weekend and it swayed a lot of people um, and it probably it probably did influence my decision somewhat Um, I I think even with without the Guardian article I probably would have went for Salah anyway because I don't take I don't take many risks in FPL and I just felt there was a risk that Aguero could miss out at the weekend just because Jesus uh, needed game time and Jesus did start Um, so Whenever there's a slight risk about my player, especially when it comes to a captaincy, I'm just going to play it safe, and that's what I did with Salah. And in the end up, I think those who own both Salah and Aguero, those of us who went for Salah captain, we missed out on 11 points altogether. So so those who own Salah and Aguero, if you captain Salah, you got 38 points between the two of them. If you captained Aguero, you got 49. So an 11 point difference, which is not huge. Yes, it would have been nice to, to get those 11 points, but it's not something I'm going to beat myself up about. Um, I think one of the thing, main things we've all learned from, from this week is we need to be very careful about what we're reading um, and, and take everything with a pinch of salt, no matter which uh, newspaper it's been published in or whatever else. Um, and we always need to make our own decisions. 
um, don't don't be swayed too much by others. I mean, I I put up a tweet on Friday saying that I, I put up a link to the article and I just put up a tweet said Mo Salah captain, uh, didn't give any explanation or whatever. But then once Aguero gets his hat trick, then the Twitter trolls come out and they like to have a pop and, and it's easy it's easy to have a pop at people in hindsight, but. Again, there's a lot of us who put out our opinions on Twitter. We don't have to do that. And I think the main thing is, it's another lesson there is you don't don't always follow uh, what what people are saying on social media. You you have to make your own decisions at the end of the day. And if you're gonna if you're gonna follow um, the opinions of others, you can't you can't really go attacking them afterwards because at the end of the day, it's your team and you made the decision at the end of the day. So I, I love being part of the FPL community, but. This season, I've seen a I've seen a dark side to it in the in the last couple of weeks. Um, there has been a couple of things that have annoyed me on, on social media, and I've, I've probably spent a little bit less time on Twitter because of that. Um, I get another thing was the guy who wrote the Guardian article. I mean, he was obviously going off something. Um, it wasn't just it didn't just come out of fresh air that there was talk that Aguero might have lost his place, um, and and some of the abuse that he got on on social media was just horrendous um, I just think we need to think before we tweet to remember these are human beings and they are going to see the, the tweets and I just think it's completely over the top over the sake of a of an FPL game um, but anyway I'm, I'm getting sidetracked I don't want to I want to try and be a bit sound a bit more enthusiastic on this one um, so that was the Salah Aguero captaincy uh, again I don't I don't really regret captain Salah because I think there was sound logic behind it I want my captain 100% to play. Um, I fancied Salah and Aguero both to score equally, pretty equally in gaming two. It just it turned out Aguero was had an absolute blinder, um, three uh, three goals and an assist. Watching Salah last night was actually pretty frustrating. He got two assists, but again on another day he could have had probably two goals as well. I mean he could have took the penalty maybe if 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 Liverpool got the penalty later in the game, Milner might have been off the pitch. We might have seen Salah take the penalty. He had a very good chance early early on in the match where he was one on one with the keeper, put it over the top, and another day that's in the back of the net. So it's fine margins, um, but well done, well done to the Aguero captainers. Uh, they've nailed it in game week two. Um, I'll talk about game week three captaincy later because we're going to have to do it all again. I think uh, but it's going to be Salah versus Aguero again, probably game week three for captaincy. But I'll talk about that a little bit later. Apart from the captaincy, my seventy four points came from so I had the three city guys I had Aguero Mendy and Ederson I'm pretty happy with Mendy and Ederson uh, the midfield is a bit of a minefield and we've seen that with uh, with Pep's lineup Sterling Mares uh, Sané were all benched at the weekend so the, the midfield is it's a pretty hard place to pick from so I'm quite happy to go with Mendy and Ederson and Aguero I think they're probably a bit safer than the midfielders um, and like I said in last week's episode Mendy Mendy basically is a midfielder anyway who gets clean sheet points and again, I think going back to not, to not captain Aguero, it just Pep's lineup just shows that nobody is safe in that city lineup with the likes of Sterling, Mares, and Kyle Walker probably in particular find himself on the bench. It just shows you that any given week anybody can find himself on the bench. So we've just got to be prepared for the rotation. You know, take it on the chin and just make sure you have a a good first sub that can come in and do a job for you because there will be more of it. Richarlison did the business again. Arnautovic. Scored a penalty. Good to see him on penalties. Uh, Mark Noble's been on penalties for a long time at West Ham, so it was nice to see Arnautovic taking a penalty. I do slightly worry about Arnie though, because West Ham have been pretty poor, really. Um, they, they seem pretty disjointed. They haven't really got fire in all cylinders yet, but I probably will end up keeping Arnautovic, even though he's got tough fixtures coming up. He's a player I just feel he, he can score against anyone, so I'm quite happy to keep him, and I've got, I've got bigger fires to fight this week anyway. Very disappointing again, Ben Davis and Christian Eriksen. So that's two weeks in a row now where they've where they've let me down. Davis, I feel, has been very unlucky first two game weeks. He's, he's creating chances which are not being converted uh, by teammates. There was one in particular where Lucas Mora had a header uh, from point blank range and he put it wide, which would have been a Davis assist. So I'm not I'm not overly worried about Davis. I'm probably going to end up keeping him as well this week because I've got other issues. Um, Ericsson I am worried about because he seemed to be playing uh, a lot deeper at the weekend with, with Spurs playing with three centre backs the the wing backs were pushing on and Ericsson was seemed to play a bit deeper almost you know just 
as a playmaker almost rather than further forward as a number 10. And the biggest worry I think with Ericsson is Trippier was taking a lot of the set pieces, corners and free kicks. So Trippier took a free kick and stuck it in the back of the net. So it's hard to see Ericsson getting them back. Now, I don't think Ericsson scored any free kicks, direct free kicks last season, but it's his appeal does diminish if he's not on them. Um, and his assist potential obviously drops as well if Trippier is going to be taking free kicks. So Ericsson is on the chopping block for me this week. I'll talk about him when I come to transfers. He could be leaving this week. Uh, Spurs have got tough fixtures. I think they've got United and Liverpool in their next three games. So it might be time to part ways with Ericsson for a short time at least. Jota, one point, subbed at half time, I think. So he's another on the chopping block for me this week. Zero points from Van Aanholt, but kind of grateful for zero because he could easily have been sent off at the end if he took down Mane, which actually probably would have been better for my overall score if he took down Mane. Uh, so I would have got, what, minus two or whatever it is for Van Aanholt's red card, but Mane wouldn't have scored his goal. But then again, Salah wouldn't have had his assist, so it's all... Just happy Van Aanholt didn't get sent off, so he's not suspended. Josh King disappointing again. Callum Wilson, the troll of all trolls, scoring again. Uh, Wilson Wilson looks really sharp. Um, I won't be making a sideways move, but he, he does look the pick of the Bournemouth strikers at the moment. Um, King, I'm not really happy with, but he's got Everton at home next. Everton are conceding quite a few goals, so I'm probably going to end up holding on to, to Josh King as well. I think that's me covered mainly for uh, the review of Game Week 2. Peltier didn't play for Cardiff. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any news online of an injury, so it's a bit worrying that it, it might have been tactical and he, and he may have lost his place now. So we may have lost a 4 million uh, defender. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't go transferring him out yet just till we see what happens in Game Week 3. Uh, Juan Bissaka was on the bench as well, minus 2, red card, uh, when Salah was through 1-on-1. One -on -one. So I think Juan Bissaka's only got a one game ban, so there's no need to no need to get rid of him, just hold on to him. He's already risen to four point one as well, so there's no need to get rid of him just for one game week. So he's still a gift. He he, he played really well, aside from getting sent off. There wasn't much he could really do about that. He had to take Salah down. So hold on to the special one. Gonna move into now a couple of talking points from game week two and mention a couple of players that I've added to my watch list. So, the first one is Marcus Alonso. I don't own him. He he performed again, got a goal. Uh, he's gone up to six point six million now, and he's a player. He's a player I would like to get in, but it's it's not going to be easy for me to get him in, um, and I'm probably not going to get him this week. But Alonso is high on my watch list now. I avoided Chelsea altogether coming into the season. I just wanted to wait and see how they you know settled in under Sarri, and they've. They've impressed me first two game weeks, so I'm definitely looking at them now with their fixture set to improve as well. Um, I think Alonso's a great pick at 6.6. .6. He's still he's still getting forward. Um, he's getting assists. He's getting goals. He he's getting a lot of shots on goal as well. I'm pretty sure he's he might even be number one for shots on goal so far this season among defenders. So definitely one to consider. Another Chelsea player who I'm interested in is Pedro. Uh, he's also 6.6 .6 million, I think. Yeah, uh, he's played played the first two games, scored in both, so I can't really see him being dropped given his form. I know Hazard has to come back in at some point, but I think I've seen comments this week that Sari said he's still going to continue to work Hazard in slowly. So it looks like Pedro will start for the next week or two. Um, and I, I, as I mentioned, Chelsea have great fixtures, so Pedro has a very good chance of coming into my side this week. Um, another similar priced midfielder, Mkhitaryan, at seven million. He he impressed me at the weekend as well. He's probably more nailed on uh, out of him and Pedro. Uh, it looks like Mkhitaryan's going to be an important player uh, under Unai Emery, uh, and he was superb at the weekend. Uh, he can get goals, he can get assists, and like Chelsea, Arsenal's fixtures are going to turn now for the better as well. So Arsenal and Chelsea are two teams I'm targeting this week uh, and over the next few weeks. So Mkhitaryan at seven million, I think he could be an absolute bargain this season. Harry Kane scored in August, finally broke the curse. Thankfully, get sick of hearing about this uh, curse. So it's good, good that the monkey's off his back now. I'm still not interested in him because twelve point five million is a lot of cash to fork out, and 
I just think Aguero and even Aubameyang are probably better options at this point. So Kane's just a, a watch for me at the moment. Um, he did look sharper. But again, Spurs, fixture-wise as well, again, I mentioned they have Liverpool and United in their next three. So I'm, I'm happy enough to go without Kane for the time being. Um, just wait and see how he does over the next few weeks. And then I'd probably, I'd probably be thinking about a plan to, to bring him in. Maybe it'll be a wild card, I don't know. Uh, I mentioned Callum Wilson looking very sharp. Uh, he danced through the West Ham defence, although it's not very hard to dance through that West Ham defence, but it was a very well taken goal, um, and he looks he looks really good. Um, he's got himself in his FPL team as well, which is always a good sign that he's he's confident of, of getting the goals this season. So, again, he trolled me last season. He trolled a lot of us last season, but we I think we just have to forget about that now. And when a player's in form, no matter what he's done to you in the past, you've got to consider him. Uh, Ryan Fraser as well at Bournemouth I'm very interested in 5.5 million I think he, he looks like he could be great value this season he got an assist to add to his goal in game week 1 um, and at 5.5 million you know you don't really need him to perform every week if he just chips away at assists and a goal here and there he, he'll be really good value at 5.5 so he's higher on my watch list as well a couple of players now that scored at the weekend who are on my watch list Danny Ings James Madison, David Silva, Will Hughes, and Theo Walcott. Uh, Danny Ings, I mentioned on last week's podcast, I liked the look of him when he came off the bench in game week one. Now he scored in game week two. I think he'll be pretty nailed on in that Southampton uh, forward line. And at 5.5 million, again, he could be really good value this season. He, and he's, he's someone I'm, I'm looking at. Probably not going to get him this week because I'm going to, I think I'm just going to hold Josh King for one more week and see how he does. Um, but then, I mean, if King blanks again, it's going to be straight to Danny Ings. Madison, um, we we laugh. We all actually laughed at Az on the FPL show last week when he when he tipped Madison as a differential captain pick. But he, he produced the goods, um, did the business for Az this week. And he, again, he impressed me again. 6.5 million, I think he could be a really good value uh, uh, mid-price midfielder this season. With... Jamie Vardy banned now as well. We could even see Madison on penalties maybe for the next few games, which would make him even more attractive. So with I, I'm looking to move Jota on this week, and Madison is one of the players I'm considering bringing in. David Silva was superb at the weekend. It was great to see him uh, stick one in the top corner with his, with his little son there as well after all the troubles he had last season. So... Silva is he's, he's still he seems to just get better with age and I can I can see Silva getting a lot of game time while while uh, KDB is ruled out um, I think I think Silva might be I think he's 8.4 million I think he could be the pick of the city midfielders for the next few weeks I, th I can see him playing most weeks Will Hughes very lucky not to get sent off at the weekend and then he scored a great goal um, 5 million I think Hughes is so one of the cheaper midfielders who's got a, a decent goal threat and Watford have surprised me this season they, I think they've started with 2 wins now and they, I think they've scored 5 goals in 2 games so definitely uh, while Hughes could provide good value as well with his goal threat Walcott got an impressive haul I think he got 13 points um, I, I do still feel though that Richarlison is the man to own from the, from the Everton, Everton midfield um, I would worry about Walcott's game time a little bit. I know they've got the guy, the Brazilian, I think he's Brazilian, the Bernard guy. Uh, it could even be Siggy who makes way for the Bernard guy, but I would worry about uh, Walcott's game time. I think Richarlison is the most nailed on of, of all three of those, so I've got him and I'm, I'm sticking with him. I, I'm not interested in, a, in an Everton double up in midfield. Last talking point before I move on, uh, the Man United defence. I have no idea what's going on. There they were atrocious uh, against Brighton. Eric Bailly was superb in game week one and then he just looked like a headless chicken in game week two. So there's there's big issues there defensively for United. David De Gea, even, he doesn't seem to be the goalkeeper he was last season. So I don't know if that's to do with the defence in front of him or what's going on there, but a lot of shots seem to be going past him. Um, it was the same in the World Cup. So... I'm just going to avoid the United defence. I don't have any United players at the moment and I'm not interested in any until 
until they get themselves together. Um, maybe when Maric comes back to, to shield the back four, we might see an improvement. But again, just a wait and see on United at the moment for me. So that's talking points and watch list covered. I'm going to talk a little bit now about captaincy for Game Week 3. So I haven't seen any captaincy polls yet this week. Um, but I would imagine it's going to be between Salah, Aguero and Aubameyang. So Salah's got Brighton at home, Aguero's away to Wolves and Aubameyang is at home to West Ham. Currently I'm on Mo Salah and more than likely I'm going to keep it on Mo Salah. Uh, I just think Liverpool at home against Brighton is it's, it's too good. It's too good enough for me to cap Mo Salah. Um, Aguero, obviously Aguero is a great option again away to Wolves. Um, there, there, again, it's 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 another tricky one this week. There's not much between them. I would expect both to score similarly this week again. Um, I'm just hoping this week that Salah can get one over Aguero. Aubameyang, I don't have Aubameyang, but I think he's a very viable option as well. Again, He's got West Ham at home who have been very poor. Uh, from what I've seen of them in the first two game weeks, defensively especially. I mentioned Callum Wendt, so Aubameyang hasn't scored yet this season. He was pretty wasteful uh, game week two, but I mean, he's getting into positions. That before long, he's going to be sticking those in the back of the net. He's a, he's a top-class striker, and I mentioned Arsenal's fixtures are improving. Now could be the time to get in on Aubameyang. Um, I'm happy just to hold, uh, to stick with Aguero, though, at the moment. Um but I do expect Aubameyang to do well this weekend against West Ham. So that's captaincy. I'm on Salah. More than likely going to stay there. Probably going to be hurt by Aguero again. Don't know if I can take that pain two weeks in a row, but, but let's see what happens. Moving on to transfers for game week three. So what am I thinking about? I haven't made any moves yet. I, I've actually been very tempted to, to play... My wild card this week. I've never, I've never played a wild card in game week two, um, and I'm probably not going to do it. But I have been thinking about it. There's a lot of players I want to get rid of, and there's a lot of players I want to bring in. And I've only got one free transfer this week, so I've got the likes of Jota, Josh King, Ben Davis, Eriksson, Peltier now. Maybe if he's lost his place, and my 4.5 million midfielder Stevens looks like he could drop in price as well, which will be very frustrating because. You get your 4.5 midfielder just to sit on the bench and not to lose value. So there's arguably six players that I'd be happy to get rid of. And then there's the likes of Mane, Alonso, Pedro, Mkhitaryan, maybe even Danny Ings and Robertson as well at Liverpool, who I, who I probably want. But the more I look at it, it's probably not worthy of a wild card this early. Um, I can probably get through it with a with a free transfer and maybe a minus four here and there. Um, I don't like taking hits, but I think sometimes you need to, especially if... Especially like me, there's a couple of things I want to patch up, um, and I'm quite happy to take a minus four. You know, maybe this week and next week, and be able to hold on to my wild card for a little bit longer because it's it's such a powerful tool, the wild card, and I wouldn't really feel comfortable playing it in game week two. I don't like just going on two weeks worth of data, so that's why I'm going to hold it probably till at least game week four. Yeah, um, it's just we'll have a lot more information to go on then. We'll know a lot more about Arsenal and Chelsea. They'll be more settled and things like that. Um, so what, I, what I'm what i actually looking at is... I think Jota's definitely going to go this week for me. Now, I missed price rises on Sunday night because I was out. I got home late, so I missed Jota dropped in price and Pedro jumped in price. So... Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not able to do Jota straight to Mkhitaryan now because of that as well. So... Again, sometimes you can pay to move early in the market, but I was out and I just there was nothing I could do about it on Sunday night. I don't think I would have moved early anyway because I really wasn't sure what I'm go was going to do, and I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. So I've just took a wait and see approach this week with transfers. I'm getting absolutely hammered by the price changes, but I'd rather wait until I know exactly what I want to do uh, rather than go and chasing uh, price falls and rises. So Jota's probably going to go uh, for probably Pedro because I can't afford Mkhitaryan. I don't think there's much between those two anyway at the moment. Um, so if I just make one free transfer this week, it'll have to be Jota to either Pedro or James Madison. Um, and I just fancy Pedro for the next you know two or three weeks. 
uh, which would probably bring me up to a wild card then and I could reassess Pedro. But I think he should be pretty nailed on given his form. Um, and I like Chelsea's fixtures, so I want to get in on Chelsea. Um, if I wanted to get Mkhitaryan for Jota, I'd prob- I would need to take a minus four somewhere. So the minus four I'm looking at is possibly Ericsson out for Mane, who has hurt me a lot in the first two game weeks. Going for Ericsson over Mane game week one it has been very, very painful. I think Mane's on 26 points and Ericsson's probably on four. So that's a big point swing over two weeks. And I, I just I put up a tweet before the Liverpool game last night, Mane to hurt me again tonight. And he, I got to the nearly to the 90th minute without him doing anything and then he had to go and score. And I just, 10 o'clock, shut down the laptop, turned off the phone and went to bed. I was, I was just so angry with, uh, with Mane scoring again. So... He's gone up in price again. I think he's 9.8 now. And he's a player, he's probably top on my watch list. He's probably the player I really want. Um, he looks he looks hot this season. Um, he's outscoring Salah as well. Um, so I'm looking to double up Salah Mane in midfield. And Liverpool have got Brighton at home this weekend. And I just, I would really like to have Mane for that fixture. I think he can do, uh, do more damage in that one. So today's Tuesday and... The way it looks at the moment, if I want to do Jota to Pedro and Ericsson to Mane, I've got exactly enough cash to do it. So I'll need to do it before any more price changes. So I need to keep an eye on those. Um, so I'm probably going to have to make a decision today or tomorrow on that one. Um, but again, I'm not 100% sure. But more than likely, that's what I'll do. I'll get Pedro and Mane for Jota and Ericsson or else I'll just get rid of Jota. And get Pedro and then just hold Ericsson and hopefully that patience pays off with him. Um, we know he's a proven FPL player. Patience might be the name of the game with the likes of him and, and Ben Davis. And the way Man United played against Brighton, you never know Ericsson could get something from them uh, this weekend. So I'm going to be mulling that over for uh, again probably today and tomorrow uh, before I make a, deci- a final deci- decision. So that's captaincy and transfers discussed. I'm going to move on now to a couple of questions. Uh, I've got four or five here. A lot of them are to do with Liverpool, as you would imagine. Uh, The first one from Simon on Slack. Uh, Would I switch uh, to Mane from Firmino? Firmino seems to be playing a lot deeper and he's a lot less involved. Um, I'm just going to put these all in here together because they're all Liverpool related. Is Keita an option? Uh, Gerard on Slack as well a question for non Mane owners do we wait until game week 9 because Liverpool have tough fixtures coming up and the last one then to do with Liverpool is from Evan I think that's on Slack as well uh, to Salah or not to Salah so I'll, I'll try just tackle all these together so first of all I've got I've only got one Liverpool at the moment I've got Salah um, I do want to get Ma- uh, Mane as well so they're my preference when it comes to Liverpool and then I know some people are on a wild card this week. If I was on a wild card, I'd be looking at Salah, Mane, and Robertson. If you wanted to have three Liverpool players, that is. Um, now with their fixtures, you might be happy enough to go with uh, just one or two. But that's my preference from Liverpool: uh, Salah, Mane, and Robertson. One of the questions there was: Is Keita an option? I've been very impressed with Keita as a footballer in the first two games, but as an FPL option, I'm not convinced. I think he's got three points in both games. Uh, I think he's seven point five million. I just, I just wouldn't want to waste a Liverpool spot on him, um, with the likes of the players I've mentioned, who I prefer. Uh, I do think he will get FPL points this season, but I think seven point five million is just a bit too much for me to be interested in him. Back to Simon's question: Would I switch to Mane from Firmino? Uh, it's be, it's been a pretty frustrating two weeks for those who went with Firmino. Um, but I, do, I still don't think I would make the sideways move from Firmino to Mane, especially if it involved a point set. I'd probably just be a bit patient with Firmino and maybe give him another week or two, especially Brighton this weekend, home to Brighton. That could be the one for Firmino to, to come up trump. So Mane is my preference, but if I owned Firmino, I think I would just hold on to him one more week at least and then maybe reassess. Gerard's question was uh, for non Mane owners, so like myself, should we wait until game week nine because Liverpool have tough fixtures? So Liverpool have Brighton this weekend, then it's Leicester, Spurs away, Southampton, 
then Chelsea away and Man City at home. So they've got three of the big sides in their next six games. Um, so is that going to put me off maybe getting Manny? I don't think it is. I would, I would, I would fancy Liverpool to get a couple of goals in every game they play this season from what I've seen of them in the first two games. I wouldn't be worried about Manny, the likes of Manny and Salah when they come up against the likes of Spurs, Chelsea and Man City. I still expect Liverpool to score a couple of goals in those games. So fixtures is not going to put me off, Sadio Mane. Um, and as I said, it's the Brighton at home this weekend is the big attraction for me to get him in now rather than waiting. And again, he's shooting up in price. He's gone to 9.8 already. So he's, he's rose 0.3 already. And I just feel if I don't get him in soon, He's going to be, he'll, he'll be over 10 million soon. Um, so I might just get him in when he's at a reasonable price. Evan's question was to Salah or not to Salah. So Manny has outscored Salah to this point in both game weeks. I think it's 26 points to 17 as it stands. So there's, what is there? There's a 3.2 million difference in price now between Salah and Manny. So a lot of people are already considering dropping Mo Salah uh, and just going with Manny and just using the cash to strengthen their squad and I can see why people are doing that um, I just feel if you own Salah Brighton at home this weekend I wouldn't sell him before that one so I would just hold him for that and then maybe reassess again if Manny goes big against Brighton and, and Salah doesn't do as much I can see a lot of people going Manny over Salah and just using the cash then to, to strengthen elsewhere and I do think there will come a point in my season soon where I'll probably consider going without Salah as well. But that will be when, probably when I activate my wildcard. I'll probably play around with teams that have Salah and teams that don't have Salah. So again, I don't have a set week when I wildcard, but I do feel it'll be soon, um, probably around game week four or five. So I'll talk a lot more about to Salah or not to Salah when that time comes. So hopefully I've answered a few of those Liverpool questions there. Hopefully I haven't missed any. Moving on to the next question is from Alan Chung on Twitter. He's asking, should he sell Josh King for a minus four hit? Um, I wouldn't do that personally. I've I've mentioned I'm going to keep Josh King against Everton this weekend. Bournemouth like to score goals. Everton like to concede goals. Um, Josh King has been disappointing, but I'm hopeful that he'll repay the faith this weekend. It'll be third time lucky for us. And he'll... he'll get the better of Callum Wilson hopefully this weekend just linked to that question there was a question on Twitter as well from Red Mikey uh, he's asking who for those who are selling Josh King who should they replace him with I think Danny Ings is the one that stands out for me because he saves you a million pounds and he looks very sharp um, so he's the one I'll probably be looking to move to once I run out of patience with Josh King Next question is from Manny Balandinos. Great name on Twitter. Uh, the prices are going up too fast. Should we be making early transfers or should we be patient and wait? So, very good question. Difficult one to answer. Last week, well, anyone who follows me, who's followed me over the last couple of seasons, knows I am very patient and I usually wait as long as I can before making transfers and I don't worry too much about uh, price changes. Last week... I, I acted very early on the Monday. I got rid of Van Dyke and I got Mendy uh, right away uh, just because I thought Mendy was a must-have and it was a pretty low-risk transfer uh, because there was no midweek games or anything like that. So this week then, it's different. I haven't made any moves yet. I've, I've been a bit more patient and I'm getting hit hard by price changes. I think it comes down to... It, it probably depends how you want to play the game. If you want to be aggressive and you know attack the price rises, then go early... Um, but if you want to play conservative, conservatively and avoid risks, which is what I tend to do, just, just wait and don't worry too much about the price changes. When, when things like like this week, I've missed out on the Jota to Mkhitaryan move because of Jota's price drop. But when that happens, I'm just more than happy just to settle for the next best player. And, and this week, I feel that that's Pedro. Um, so I just kind of let the game decide the transfer for me almost in that case. Um I just I don't like making early transfers. We've seen what happened last week with with KDB, um, and and 
that can happen to anybody any given week so it is risky it, again it just depends if you want to be you know if you want to take risks go for it take, make them early but if you want to be patient uh, and, and avoid the risks just just wait I think one thing I will say is early in the season you know last week and this week it's probably easier to go early because there's less risk of midweek injuries because there is no midweek games and the prices are very volatile as well at the start a lot of people are, are playing the game at the start so the price changes are probably changing a lot more frequently than they will be, you know, a couple of weeks down the line. So, again, it, it really, it really, it's really up to you how you want to play the game. Last question is from FPL Ninja on Twitter: Is it ever too early to wildcard? Yeah, another good question. As I mentioned, I have considered playing my earliest ever wildcard this week. I'm not going to, but I was pretty close to doing it. Um, I don't think it's ever too early if if your if your squad needs it. I often get asked, you know, when is the best when's the best time to play a wild wild card? What game week are you playing your wild card? And or people ask me when should I play my wild card? You know, they send me a picture of their team and they ask me when, but it's impossible to tell. You you'll know yourself looking at your team when the right time is to play your wild card. Um, you know, if you've got five or six changes that are urgently needed and you feel that you know there's a lot of players that you need to get in right away then that's the time to wildcard there, there's probably people out there who have the likes of KDB Jamie Vardy getting suspended Juan Bissaka getting suspended you know who, who are looking pretty light now for game week 3 so if, if you feel that that game week 2 now is the right time to play it then by all means go for it but I do feel that if you're in a position to hold on to it for a little bit longer um, when we have more information to go on it can be very powerful a couple of weeks down the line I waited last season till game week 10. Um, usually I played a lot earlier, but things were going very well for me last season. I had a good start. Um, and I was around 100k, I think, in game week 10. Um, and then I played the wildcard game week 10. And within two or three weeks, I'd risen to the top 10,000. So it just shows you it can be very powerful once you have more information to go on. And you can make better informed decisions. And you can also set yourself up as well for the busy uh, festive period as well. You, you know, set yourself up with a strong squad that can deal with the inevitable rotation. So that's that's all the questions covered. Thanks as always for sending them in. Um, sorry I can't get to more of them. I'll try answer some of them on, on Twitter later today if I get some time. I'm gonna. I want to. Gonna before I finish up, I just want to say thanks to all my patrons. Um, we had. To, I had 200 sign-ups this week, so I'm blown away by that. And I just wanted to give those uh, people a shout out to say thanks for the support. the The Slack channel is great. Um, we're we're on there every day. Uh, there's about there's probably about 175 of us in there now, um, from all from all corners of the globe, talking about FPL at at all hours of the day uh, with all the different time zones and things like that. So it's really good to to do to discuss FPL, you know, with people from all over and, and to bounce ideas off each other and stuff like that. So if you want to get involved, if you want to join the Slack channel, join us. Um, all the information is, you can find it, you'll find it, you'll find a link on my Twitter account, which is at FPL General, but you can, it's patreon.com forward slash FPL General. You'll find all the information there. And if you have any questions about it, just send me an email or pop me a message on Twitter and I'll get back to you on that. Um, so thanks thanks very much to my patrons this week I'm going to do a a Patreon podcast for them and I'm also going to I'm hoping to do a, a Patreon live stream this week as well I'm going to use the Patreon live streams just kind of as, as a test run before I start the the weekly uh, YouTube streams then on Friday nights that, that everybody can watch so I know it's it's probably annoying I keep saying I'm going to be on YouTube soon but I would like to say next week for sure I'll do a a YouTube live stream on Friday night. So, if you've enjoyed the podcast, uh, give it a like, give it a retweet. If you're on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment as well. I see all the comments, whether you're on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, wherever you are. Just leave a comment and I'll, and I'll try to get back to you at some point before the deadline. Uh, a review on iTunes is always very helpful as well if, if you enjoyed the podcast. I'm always welcome to feedback on the podcast as well. Again, it's this is only episode 11, so it's early days of the podcast. Any suggestions you have to improve it, let me know. Any constructive criticism, let me know as well. Open to all feedback. 
I am looking to add some an intro, some intro music, but I've been talking to someone. I, I just want to make sure that I'm in the clear to use this particular song before I do that. So hopefully that'll be added soon. Yeah, just to give it a bit more life. Um, that's it. Enjoy the rest of your week. Good luck for game week three. And I'll be back next Tuesday with episode 12. Thanks for listening, folks.